You were raised this way, I know. I was raised this way. Out walking through the woods, exploring, see what you find. This week on Kentucky Afield. Let's go see what we can find today. We catch a lot of fish on the show, but it's not that often that we find dry land fish, also known as morel mushrooms. Pinch all the way at the bottom. Yep. Now twist. Next. That's fish. Oh, it's a good one. We're yep. crappie yep. fishing the mighty Ohio. That is a really good crappie. Then, we're tagging along with a conservation officer for a day of water patrol. I'm off serving fish and wildlife. I'm going to pull up there next to you. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. It's a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum loaded with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. Mercy <laughs> Leo! Yeah, we can't get the keeper. Here it goes! Boom! Oh! oh. Wow, that happened. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Some of my greatest memories as a child was just exploring the woods to see what I could find. And sometimes if you're lucky, you may even fill a skillet. Today we're here in Grayson County. We're here with the Meredith family. Hey, Carla, I follow you on Facebook. I know you really like to just get out this time of year and involve your kids. Just take a walk through the woods. Yep. We're outside all the time. All the time. I know you brought your daughter and your son here and uh, we're going to do some fun stuff today. You were raised this way. I know I was raised this way out walking through the woods, exploring, see what you find. And April is a great month to do it. All the ground cover is not grown up and we may find all kinds of things today. What, what kind of things are we looking for? Might find a shed <laughs> antler or some morel mushrooms. <laughs> Uh, you might even find an arrowhead. You never know. This is how most kids should be introduced to the outdoors. Walking through the woods. Mm -hmm. Let's go see what we can find today. You ready? <laughs> Look here. Look at this. They got a name for these, don't they? Hickory chickens. Um, what else? Dry land fish. These are really, really, really good to eat. Now, oh, yeah. You knew you were out today walking through the woods. This was an opportunity to potentially find some of these. You brought a bag. Well, I've always been told you're supposed to use a mesh sack so that the spores can spread and I, maybe more will grow in this spot next year. I tell you what, if you have a spot that produces morels year after year, you kind of got a little slice of gold. So. You want to try to protect it if you can, but to bring them out in the sack just in case the spores can fall out. Are you so going to pick it? You know how to pick these? Uh -huh. You want to show us? Pinch all the way at the bottom. Yep. Now twist. Perfect. Looky there. Look what you've got. So if your mama takes that home tonight and, uh, and puts that in the skillet, you're going to give it a try? Or maybe tomorrow she's going to soak it overnight for you. Yeah. No. <laughs> you already see another one? I want to pick it. Ooh, take that part off. Man, look at that. That looks so good. I found two mushrooms by myself. You sure did. So Owen, I noticed a while ago you had a little different approach to looking for these morels. I noticed you took a knee. Yeah. Show me what you were doing and uh, tell me why you do that. I get down, I mean, you hear bird's eye view might be the best sometimes. And if you get down, because they're hard to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, that big or that big, they're yeah. camouflage. So if you get down, just scan, you yeah. see. Yeah, and plus we do have some li uh, leaf litter as well as, you know, some green foliage with these may apples coming up. If you're standing like this, it might be blocking the view, but if you kind of yeah. get down and look, you, you can, can sometimes, see under. well it works because I, I think you spotted two of those first so it must work pretty well for you. Yeah. <laughs> nice one here. Look at there. there you go. Yeah. What a pretty find. A beautiful morel mushroom. So Carla, when you're out looking for morels, tell me a little bit about what do you look for when you're looking for morels? Damp areas near yeah. streams. Usually when you see May apples, that's a good indicator that the ground is damp. I think the weather conditions are the biggest factor in 
how many you're gonna find and where. Yeah. Awesome. Is this where we found the last one? Yep, I think Alea picked the last one right here. We should look up in that drain right there. You know what? It's, there's probably some extra moisture right there. You're Let's probably check right. It out. All right. Ooh, here's one. Oh yeah. They're all different shapes and sizes too. Look at that thing. How pretty that is. Man, they're, they're right here in this little ditch. We got one right here. And then another one right here. Jackpot. We're into them now. We're finding quite a few. It is amazing, like say, you can walk through an area and absolutely be nothing. And, it, and the ground looks almost the same but it has to be something about the, the moisture or the amount of sunlight or for whatever reason, they're not there. And then all of a sudden, there they are. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> what? Look, what, look what Owen just spotted. Right here looking for mushrooms and look what we've got. What is that? <laughs> You're gonna put it on your head. <laughs> Don't poke your eye, but here, do you wanna put it on your head? Put that up there, let's see what you look like. The other side of this might be around here. Hey, you can carry this, but you gotta be real careful if you fall down with these. You don't wanna get let this poke you, okay? Why don't you take it over and show it to your mama? Cool. That's isn't that, beautiful. Isn't that cool? To prepare these, yeah. I slice them long ways. Okay. And then I soak them overnight in the refrigerator in salt water. Okay. And that gets the little bugs out. Then they're ready to cook. And what I do is I dip them in egg and then flour, salt and pepper, and pan fry them in okay. oil. You don't have to cook them that long, do you? I mean, you just no, until the batter I guess gets it's, crispy? No, uh, I prefer them crisp, yeah. but he prefers them soft. Okay. So, so I you cook really, them crisp. You cook them, <laughs> hey, the power of the, the, the chef, right. you get to cook them how you like. Well, I'll tell you what, Carly, you are truly a modern day country woman full-time job raising two kids but you're finding time to get these kids outdoor and they're doing things that you love but you're kind of passing on this to the next generation well thank you I appreciate you having us out today hey I'm even found a, found an, uh, an antler shed uh, for, uh, to add to the hall so we'll, over 40 mushrooms and an antler shed that's a that's a good afternoon in yeah. anybody's book good couple hours yeah fantastic thank you so much you're welcome you can catch crappie in the state of Kentucky nearly all year long, just about in every county here in the state, including the entire northern border. Everybody likes a crappie fish. I mean, when the crappie are biting, they're so fun, but people don't think about catching them in the Ohio River. A lot of people don't, and that's the thing about the Ohio River. It is a virtually untapped natural resource. I have fished all over this country with American Crappie Trail. I have went fun fishing at a lot of different states, and I'd rather fish right here on this river than anywhere. Because when you do catch them here, a lot of times they are huge crappie. And that's the thing, you've got to get in the tributaries, not out on the main lake. And once you get back there, if the bite's on, it's unbelievable. Today we're gonna try the spider rig. Yes, we're gonna spider rig. We'll be putting out eight rods, which in Kentucky, you can use eight rods. We're gonna be using a single jig head setup mm -hmm. with a quarter ounce split shot above it. And then we'll tip our soft plastics with a minnow. I go through the bottom lip and out the top lip. Okay. See the action on that dude? I noticed that you've got options with this bait to either pull these apart or leave them attached. And uh, yes. you've got them all attached right now. Yes, they are all attached right now. If I'm fishing under a bobber or if I am vertical jigging, yeah. I will leave the tail together. Now, if I go to casting, if we were casting these rods, I would definitely split the tail. It'll give it a two-legged walk coming through the water column. Okay. And we call them a firefly. They're made to where that they look a whole lot like the mayflies. When the mayflies have the die off, 
Oh yeah. It resembles mayfly. And crappie's number two food source, as far as uh, protein wise, is crawfish. That looks like a crawfish. It looks like a crawfish. It, it looks sure like does. a crawfish. You can feel any of these rods when they get that thump by laying your hand on one of okay. them. In calm conditions, kind of like this, if I've got my hand laying on here the way that we've got them mounted, I can feel a bite on your side if it's a hard bite. Oh, wow. Oh, I got him. Oh, what have <laughs> I got? I don't know, but if that's a crappie, it's a monster. Catfish. There we go. That thing of using live bait. <laughs> yep. That's everything the thing I, about using live bait. Everything yes, I eat, eat a toughy minnow, so there you go. That's about perfect eating size if you wanted to yes, sir. make a mess of them right there. That is just absolutely perfect. Are you wanting him? I don't want a mess, but if you want okay, them, then no, uh, I'll help you clean them. I just started crappie fishing about three years ago. My friends crappie fished a lot. I thought it was the weirdest thing in the whole world that they would go out there and freeze their butts off in the wintertime to go catch fish. I thought, well, fishing's just a summertime deal. And then I started crappie fishing. They finally talked me into it. And after I went, I was hooked. So you literally went from three years ago knowing nothing about nothing crappie about fishing it. to fishing professionally. To selling my business buying a boat that I would have never thought in a million years I'd have gave that much money for a doggone boat to professionally crappie fishing in three years. Three years, wow. The key to crappie fishing is having a very supportive wife. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting exactly where I caught the biggest fish over the past week yet, right now. Oh, really? Oh, see that one? Yep, get him. Uh-oh, I don't believe we got a crappie. Another catfish? I think so. Look, hey, at least he hit pole four on the outside. That's uh... that is a plus. Another nice little channel cat. Looks like that's what our show should have been on this morning. <laughs> We're spider rigging for catfish. Spider rigging for catfish. Oh, he's on her. Sure is. That's crappie number one. There you go. Another crappie. Another white crappie. Let him go back here. Ohio River is traditionally a one and done for single poling. Oh, really? Yes. And by single poling, I just mean vertical jigging. Mm -hmm. If you catch one fish off of that stump, you need to move on to the next one. You can fish there all day. And the three years that I've been fishing down here, I have caught multiples off of the same stump twice. Wow, so you gotta really cover some water. You've got to cover some water. That's a fish. Oh, it's a good one. Are you one of the netting? Yep, 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 yep. We need to get that one in the boat. That yeah, that right there is a good crappie. That is a really good crappie. Wow. Dude, that's a 14 inch or bigger crappie. That's one of them hogs. Look at that. Look at that fish. What do you think? That's a pound crappie there. Yes. I'll that right what. there is what the Ohio River is all about. It's a really, really good crappie. Chad, what do you say we make a move, buddy? You know, you told me there were two or three little creeks you could fish down here real close to that put in site. Might as well go down here and check this next creek out and just see what's there. Yes, sir. We'll go down there and check it out. That sounds good. Well, there it is, the mighty Ohio. There it is, right on the other side of the railroad. Yep. That is the first time I've ever seen cattle in the Ohio River. Yeah, that's crazy. That's something you do not see every day, that's for sure. You need to go downstream to be able to get in these creeks. You go downstream, at least past straight out to stay away from the sandbars. Oh, there we go. There's a keeper fish. You know what, that didn't take long. Change creeks and bam, start getting some bites. What do you think that fish is? Uh, that's about nine and a half, ten inch fish. Nine and a half or ten. A pretty typical fish for about anywhere you go and catch a crappie. Fish, fish on. Fish, fish. It's a little. That's all right. Got to have all age oh. classes. Oh, yeah. We've had pretty good luck putting the small ones in the boat. We've been hooking the big ones and bringing them to the top. <laughs> and losing them right at the top of the water. <laughs> oh. oh. Yes, yes. Oh. 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 
There we go. Oh, oh, did you see that? Yes, I did. Oh, he's on her. Sure is. Way out there, the deepest rod out. We got eight rods deepest out. Deepest rod out, there's another keeper. Nice job, man. Pretty crappie. We'll let that one live for another day. So go home, baby. There we oh, go. Yep. Like I said, we struggle with putting the big fish in the boat. We've hooked a lot of good We've fish. We've hooked them, yes. We've had more than our opportunities today for numbers and for big fish. Just get on Google Earth and look up and down through there because you might miss it, especially this time of year where the foliage is out. You might be driving down the river and just miss. Completely miss it. And you can see it opens up really well after you get back in here and you wouldn't know that without Google Earth. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey, you made me a believer. The Ohio yeah. River is a place, if you want to catch crappie, that you can come, and you can come in tough conditions. It's been a fun day. Well, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Boating season is officially here in the state of Kentucky. Before you launch your boat this summer, make sure you do a safety check and know all the rules and regulations. We are on Green River Lake today, and we are going to just be out on normal patrol. Our main goal today is going to be to enforce public safety laws and make sure everybody stays safe. We want the sportsmen and women of Kentucky to enjoy the waters, but we want to make sure they get to go home tonight. So we're going to be enforcing life jacket violations, riding in dangerous positions. If we come across any fishermen, we'll check a fishing license or two while we're out here and also BUI enforcement for anybody that may be operating a vessel under the influence of alcohol. So those are the type of things that we'll be looking for today. This boat is showing an expired registration. So we're gonna see if their registration is current. Maybe they just haven't put it on there. We'll go ahead and do a boat inspection while we're here, make sure the operator seems to be sober and all that good stuff, and we'll just see what we got once we get up here. Hey guys, how are you all today? Good, how about you guys? Good. I'm off serving with Fish and Wildlife. I'm gonna pull over next to you real quick. The reason I'm stopping you is I don't see any registration on this side. Is there? I didn't know we had to have one. I'm, got, I'm from where, is this a Florida boat? It is. Okay, I got, got registration. You got your proof of registration with you? While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a boat inspection as well. That's fine, that's fine. If That'd I could good. see a uh, life jacket for you two, a wearable life jacket. I see all of it laying right there in the back. When we pull up for a boat inspection, this is what we are looking for. Every boat has to be equipped with a wearable PFD for everybody on board. And if your boat is 16 foot or longer, it also has to be equipped with a Type 4 PFD, a throwable device. You also have to have a fire extinguisher if you have a gasoline motor. It's good, and you also had to have a sounding device, whether that be a horn or a whistle. Whistle's here. Good deal, guys. Y'all got everything you're supposed to have. I'm gonna push off, and y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day, okay? That was a Florida boat, so that's the reason they didn't have any registration on one side, because state of Florida, you only had to have registration on one side of your boat. However, that is, you know, enough for a stop. He did have it registered as he was supposed to have, so there's no violations. So there's two guys fishing off this boat over here. We'll go ahead and check their fishing license in their krill, see if they've got any fish on board. Hey guys, how are you all today? Good, how are you? Good. I'm off serving fishing wildlife. Gonna pull up there next to you. Go right ahead, brother. Y'all catching any fish? Just seen one. Did you? Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. All right, that's it. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, sir. That's it. Can we take a look in y'all's live well while we're here? Don't mind a bit in the world. Awesome. Y'all do some musky fishing, too? Yes, sir. Is that what y'all are after today? Yeah, I mean, they're fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, good deal, guys. I hope y'all have a great evening. Catch a bunch of fish. So we got to check fishing license right here. Everybody was compliant, super friendly, and uh, no fish yet, but you know, maybe they'll get on later this evening. A lot of times I get asked, what does a conservation officer do? And I think a lot of people don't understand it's because there's so few of us. But just so everybody knows, a conservation officer, we have full enforcement power, just like any other police officer in the state. We do have a specific mission set. Our main mission is to go out and to enforce hunting, fishing, and boating violations. 
However, while we're doing that, if we run across anything else, whether it be drugs or anything, we certainly have that authority to enforce those regulations, and we do that. We're in a day and time where you can't just go out and work hunting, fishing, and boating and not expect to run into something else because it's everywhere. Somebody set some noodles out here, attempting to catch some catfish. By law, you gotta have your customer ID number off your fishing license on here. So we're gonna pull up, make sure it's properly documented, and we'll go from there. And they've got it on there. We can actually run that customer ID number through our system and make sure whoever set these noodles has a current fishing license. So this is a legal noodle. I'll uh, throw that back in the water and we'll go out here and get a count on them, make sure they don't have more than their 50 that's allowed to have by law. It looks like they got 49. They are compliant and good to go. There's a couple kayakers over here. I'll go over and check on them. Hey guys, y'all doing all right today? Good, I'm all serving fish and wildlife. Y'all have any luck? Gotcha. He's at least 12 inches, so he's good. Y'all got a fishing license handy? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. All right. And what about you, man? You don't have it on you? No. He gave me his name and date of birth, so I did call it in and ensured that he did have a current 2019 fishing license. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that you do actually have to have your fishing license on your person, and you can be issued a citation for that. The individual day was issued a courtesy warning. So you've got a life jacket, you got a life jacket. Everybody's got life jackets, so I appreciate that. I think a lot of times I see kayakers out on the water and they don't understand or they don't know the law about having to have a life jacket with them. It is a vessel, it is on the water, and by law, you do have to have a life jacket with you in the boat. Well, guys, I'm gonna push you off. Y'all be safe. Enjoy the rest of y'all's evening, okay? Hey, guys, how are you all today? Good, I'm off serving Fish and Wildlife. I'm gonna pull up here next to you real quick. Thanks, guys. How you fellas doing? I'm doing great. Hey man, first time stopping you, you're showing a expired registration sticker up in the front. I know this is a rental boat. It's a rental oh, boat. Oh yeah. I noticed that once I once I stopped you. So I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a boat inspection real quick, make sure y'all got everything you're supposed to have. All right. If I could drive you're the operator, so if you could just get me a life jacket for everybody on board and just hand them out. Y'all sit down, just let him hand them out. There you go, buddy. You got a throw cushion, like a square throw cushion. Square right there. All right, the fire extinguisher. Make sure it's good. Feel great. Yeah, it's good. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. And a horn or whistle, something makes a noise. So you got a whistle right here. I mean, I see some alcohol, some flask. How many of you had to drink today? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. So as conservation officers, you know, we do wear many hats. We get to check a lot of people fishing, hunting, boating. We want people to be able to come out here and enjoy the outdoors. That's what our job is, is to make sure that everybody stays safe. And whenever people make poor decisions, they put other people in danger, then we have the job to do whether that to be issue a citation or make an arrest. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out this beautiful largemouth bass and the great smile on Grayson Cowles. This bass was caught at Windy Shores in Indiana. Grayson is seven years old. I love these pictures of young kids with their first turkey. Here we have John Creech, who's 13 years old, hunting the youth turkey season in Powell County, Kentucky. Who said you couldn't catch a nice largemouth bass out of the Salt River? Nine-year-old Jeb Butler caught this really nice largemouth bass on ultralight gear while fishing in Anderson County. Nice job. Here we have a beautiful rainbow trout that was caught and released in Looney Creek. This fish was caught by Bo Smith. What a fish, nice job. 
Here we have Cody Gibson of Hardin County with a nice Tom turkey. This turkey has two beards and it had one and a quarter inch spurs. Nice job. Here we have Caitlin Randall from Wayne County. This is a nice Tom turkey that she took with a bow and arrow. That's impressive. What a trophy. There are a couple of opportunities coming in here in May. Spring squirrel hunting and frog gigging. Check your hunting and fishing guide for more details. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.